4.6 jumps off of 4.5. So in 4.5, we were dealing with products. And after you start practicing, you can see a few cases that are special when we're looking at the products. And we're going to examine those special cases in this section. Because there's some faster ways to evaluate these products after you start noticing the patterns. So take these first two examples and multiply them out. Foil them out, see what you get. So from the first, what came out? First, x squared, outer, negative 6x, inner, plus 6x, and then the last, minus 36. So when you simplified, the middle two terms were gone. The positive and the negative, they canceled out. And we were left just with this binomial, two-term polynomial. But what happened in this case? How many terms in the end were left here? So first, y squared, outer, minus 2y, inner, minus 3y, and last, plus 6. So in the end, when we combine our like terms here, we have a trinomial. So when I multiply ones that look like this, I got three terms. But when I multiplied ones that look like this, I got two terms. So we're going to start to notice those patterns as we go along in this section. So we're going to go back to this FOIL method and look at it geometrically. So again, I have a rectangle with a bunch of small ones on the inside. This length is C, this length is D. So together, the length of this side is C plus D. And over here, this length is A, this large length is B. So if I add those together, I'm looking at A plus B. So we're going to look at the product, and we're going to examine, again, the area of each of these individual little rectangles. So we need to fill in some of the blanks. As I'm going for the area of 1, I have the length, but what is the width of this rectangle? It is width A. And jumping over here, what is my width? So how long is this piece? That long piece is C. And even longer than that, the length of this one is B. Last piece that's missing, how wide is this in accordance with our picture? Length D. So, let's start to build the area of part one. Area of the first rectangle, length times width is AC. For the second one, length A and width D. So, A times D. Four, triangle, or excuse me, rectangle three, not to triangles. Length times width is BC. And the last one, rectangle four, length times width, BD. So, what are we getting out in this case? If I'm looking for the area of the big rectangle, length times width, it's the sum of all of these little ones. So, if I add all these together, what am I getting out? So just as if I was going to distribute A times C, yeah, that'll give me my first piece, and we can see that. A times D, that'll give me my second piece, the sum of the next rectangle. And BC is my third, and BD is the last. So again, visually, geometrically, this is what's happened when we're asking for the area of a rectangle that's composed of two binomials. We're looking at the individual little areas of every single rectangle in part. Okay, So we want to consider the product of the sum and difference of the same two terms. So I've got the same term here, same term here. x and x, 2 and 2. Those guys match, but the signs are different. One of them is a negative and one of them is a positive. So what happens when we FOIL this out? Let's do it. First, I get x squared. Outer plus 2x. Inner minus 2x. Last minus 4. So as we simplify, what's going to be gone? It's the middle two terms, and we're left again with a binomial. And does that match our picture from what we started with in the very beginning? Same terms, x, x, 6, 6, but differing by a sign, did we get a binomial out in the end? Yeah, and what's the pattern that's coming out? 
hopefully you can start to see. We'll do another example. Same term, same term, different sign. If we do first, we get 9x squared. Outer minus 15x. Inner plus 15x. And last, minus 25. So the middle two terms are gone, and we're left with what? How can we describe these relationships now? What happens? We always get a binomial out when we have the same terms and differing signs in between. And how can we sum this up? Take my first term and square it. Take my last term and square it. And I always have a difference in between. So in our little box, the product of the sum and difference of the same two terms is the square of the first one minus the square of the second. And let me ask you this. Does the order matter with the plus and the minus? If I have minus first and plus last, do we still get the same thing out? So let's just take a look back. Here I had plus first and minus second. Got a binomial and it fits this pattern. If I flip it around, now I have negative first, positive second. Still fits that pattern. Taking the first one and squaring it, second one and squaring it, and putting a difference in the middle. So instead of having to foil these out continually, we can use that shortcut, that little pattern that we notice. First thing squared minus the last thing squared. Done. So we're going to practice a few. And the wonderful part about these tricks, if you don't remember them, what can you do? Foil it out just like normal. You're still going to get that same answer. Or if you think you've made a mistake when you're first starting to practice these, foil them out in the end and make sure that you do end up with the same answer. Well, I'm going to try to utilize these shortcuts. So we want to evaluate a few of these products, and I'm going to have you practice a few. But first, does it match the pattern? Same, same, different signs. Yes. So my first term, I take it and I square it. And I subtract my last term squared. So what do I get? x squared minus 16. And you can skip this step. That's fine. Second one, does it fit the pattern? Same, same, different sign. Cool. First one squared minus last one squared. So what do we get? 25, and we're subtracting off 4w squared. Don't forget, when we have a product on the inside here, we have to distribute the square to both terms, both parts of the term anyway. Next, same, same, different sign. Okay? So, taking the first one and squaring it, negative 4x squared, that entire thing, and I'm subtracting off 10 squared. So, negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. I have to distribute to both, and 10 squared is 100. Done. And again, the very last one, same, same, different sign. First thing squared minus the last thing squared. When we square a fraction, what has to happen? Distribute it to the top and to the bottom. So we're looking at x squared minus 9 over 64. Quicker. Quicker way to get there. And again, if you forget these tricks, foil it out. You'll always get the right answer. So go ahead and take those next three. Use the trick if you like. Foil them out traditionally if you're not comfortable using it. I'm going to use the trick, though, and see what comes out. Same, same, different sign. So I take the first one squared, and I subtract off the last one squared. Look how fast it is. Okay, same, same, different sign. Take the first one and square it. Subtract off the last one squared. So 16y2. And last, same, same, different sign. First thing squared, 4x to the what power? So I'm raising a power to a power. We need to do what with that? We can write that one out. 
So I've already distributed it to the 2, and I got out 4, so I'm not going to worry about that. But here, I'm raising a power to a power. So I need to multiply those together. Done. Again, you can foil them out if you're not sure or not confident with those shortcuts.